So you're starting out a ball python breeding project. Should you hold back the hatchlings, raise them up to breed, or should you sell the hatchlings and buy what you need? Let's talk about it, let's do the math, let's get nerdy and check it out. <laughs> What's going on everybody? It is Adam at Proper Royals. Thank you for joining me here today. If we've not met before, this channel is all about my family's ball python business, the marketing, the sales, the animals, of course, the breeding, some family fun. It's all right here. I hope you stick around and consider subscribing and checking it out. Also check out the link tree link below that will get you to all the places where Proper Royals is on the internet. And if you'd like to receive our monthly inventory availability list, shoot me an email in that link tree link and I'll get you on the list. No obligation, no cost. Hey, also check out Redline Shipping. They're the only shipping company that I use. And because of that official relationship, I am able to offer you the top tier of competitive pricing when it comes to shipping live animals. As an added incentive for you to try out Redline Shipping on your own shipping labels, use the promo code PROPER5. They're going to give you an extra five bucks off of their already aggressively priced shipping rates. So I love this debate. I have this debate with a lot of people and let me say up front, there's no right or wrong answer. It's going to come down to what suits you the best, but I want to give you some thoughts to consider. And I'll tell you what I generally opt for and where I will change that strategy or when I will change that strategy or how I'll know when to change that strategy. So the topic is, should you hold back hatchlings and grow them up to, to work a project? Or should you sell the hatchlings and buy what you need and sort of jump forward and jump in line? There, there's no right answer or wrong answer. And the best answer, do what makes you happy. At the end of the day, that, that's what's gonna matter. If you're on the hobby end of this question, maybe none of this math makes a difference. Maybe the time doesn't make a difference. Maybe the space doesn't make a difference. It's pure enjoyment. It makes you happy. Go for it. If you're at the total business end of this spectrum, I think that if you're totally in ball pythons only for business and not for any emotional fun fulfillment joy you probably won't do that well so i think we all have some vested interest in uh, joy and enjoying ourselves in doing this even the most business minded of us that ends up tainting the water a little bit because we mix emotional things with with our rational financial desires but that emotion and that passion is what drives us to keep on it i mean when you get tired of cleaning snake tubs and you got a hundred animals and you know that you're going to clean every bit of six days a week and maybe seven, you better be getting enjoyment out of it because if not, you're not going to make it anyhow. You're going to get out. All things to think about. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you think. We're going to look at a very simple example today. So things get much more complicated as you mix in other genes, as you mix in quality of the animals that you're producing. Maybe you feel like you're producing a higher quality than you can go buy. And at some point, you stick at it long enough, you're going to be producing things that you cannot go by. You're going to have, you're going to be at the top of the mountain. And then of course it'll make sense to hold back. I'm kind of framing this as starting off off. I just started my third breeding season, so I still consider myself starting off. Uh, this is a slow, long process. Let me give you the scenario. The scenario is like a really a day one realistic project. When we all first get started, we finally have understood a little bit of, of recessive genes and we've decided how cool pied ball pythons are. We scrounged up our money and we bought us a male pied. He's either ready to breed or we've had him long enough that he's ready to breed. And likewise, we have a normal breeder female that we were able to pick up. She's ready to go. So we have a breeder visual male and we have a normal female and that's the scenario. We haven't, we could come up with 99,000 other scenarios. That's the one that we're going with for this this uh, this discussion today, okay? And let's use the exact thing that I got this year. Uh, inadvertently, I had, is a whole different topic, but I had a have, still have her. Uh, she's for sale if you need a normal, if you wanna go live this dream, you come talk to me. I have a normal that was sold to me as a double het 
uh, pied and albino. I had a pied het albino male. Bretter, she gave me 10 eggs. They looked great. Oh, the anticipation was incredible. And uh, what popped out but 10 normals. That girl, that's for the second season in a row. That girl's a normal. That's it. I'm done with her. For this scenario, I got 10 eggs out of her, and they actually, the odds were spot on. 5.5. 5 males, 5 females on that clutch. That means they are 100% het pied. And scenario one is the, the, the going to be the scenario where you sell the hatchlings and you buy what you need. Here's the thought. Right now on Morph Market, it's gonna take a little time. You're not gonna do it overnight, but you work Morph Market, you work your local Facebook groups, you work your uh, you know local, uh, maybe you troll at the pet stop, a uh, pet shop, and maybe you go to a trade show, whatever it might be, a Repticon. You sell your female 100% hep hides for $75 each, and you sell your males for $50 each. Can you do better? Maybe. Again, we're going to talk time and resources here and overhead. You might not want to do better. I think those are pretty safe, realistic numbers. They're not overnight numbers. They're not wholesale numbers, but I think you could get them. So you sell all 10 of those snakes. And with that $625, you can acquire a female that's one year old. And I found one on Morph Market. She's 650 grams. I believe in one year, she'll be ready to breed. You're still going to have to wait one year on the hold back, but you're not not gonna have to wait the full the full term like you would if you saved hatchlings at this point you've got your original male you've got your original female and now you've bought another female so you have three mouths to feed three tubs to clean three snakes worth of cocoa to buy in 12 months you're gonna breed your visual male to that visual female that you've been, you sold all your hatchlings for, you bought, and you've raised up. Let's just say that she produces, for this uh, exercise, we'll say that they all are gonna produce six eggs. She produces six eggs, and because you bred visual to visual, you get six visual pieds. And that would be in about 18 months you could do that. So you're gonna buy one that you have to wait a year or four to breed and then you start breeding, it's another six months and, and you got some you got some babies. In 18 months, you would have six pieds. And if you did the same thing, not selling them all, just, just without one female, and you bred her again, and then you know, 12 months later, you got another clutch of six, and that would be 30 months. 18 months plus another 12 months is 30 months. In two and a half years, you would have 12 visual pods. Pretty cool. That's scenario one. Not too bad if you think about like ground level starting off to two and a half years, you have 12 visual pods. That's pretty fun. Second scenario. In this second scenario, you still don't need the males, you don't want the females, you don't want the producers. Because your male pied, your male visual, he's proven and he's twice as good as a, as a het. You, if you had a visual male, you're not gonna breed a het male. So sell those hats. So in the scenario number two, let's see what happens. We sell those males and at the same price, we get 250 bucks for them. So you got 250 in your pocket to feed, to do some feeding with, not bad. You're gonna hold back your five females uh, and they are het pods. You gotta hold them for, for 24 months. At best, they're gonna be ready to breed. You know, not at best, but, but typically at best best in 24 months but for this scenario let's say they're ready to go in 24 months in 24 months you breed your five females to your male most people would say that is a little heavy on the workload for the male i would agree unless you have an ultrasound and you've become uh you know maybe you've maybe you've gotten mentorship over the past two years and you're you're proficient with it so it could be done but again this these scenarios are fraught with possible issues i get it we gotta pick a scenario and go with, and, and then uh, you know we can all pick it apart in the comments. In 24 months, we start breeding these holdback het pied females, and we breed them to a visual male pied. The odds say that half of the babies will be visual pieds at that point. We'll have five clutches, six eggs each, gives you 30 hatchlings, 50% visual odds, you would have 15 pieds. You started breeding at 24 months, 
six months later you got babies okay so that's the same 30 month benchmark that's the same two and a half years so scenario one we came out with 12 visual pods in 30 months scenario two we came out with 15 visual pods 15 hats which is better which do we care more about which do we want to have here's here's my thoughts and my argument if you hold them back that's seven total animals you'd have the parents and you'd have the five holdbacks so that's seven animals that you have to feed for two and a half years versus three animals that you have to feed for two and a half years three versus seven is not that big of a deal i get it at scale though say in two and a half years like myself in two and a half years i'm up to 100 animals i'm looking around my room is why i'm off the camera looking off the camera i'm looking around my snake room right now do I want to care for 100 animals or do I want to care for 200 animals or 200 plus? That's the difference between three and seven when you make it 100 and then 200 plus. I ain't got time for that. I don't have the time, the resources, or the space. Let's say, let's just keep it at 30 and 70 so we can follow the math. The difference between 30 and 70 animals is a whole other ARS rack. That's a couple grand, few grand. That's a, it's, it's grand, it's, it's multiple thousands. Same with the feeding, okay? If you're not like me, I, like, I, I buy my rats, I do not raise them, I do not wanna breed them, I buy them. Okay, you don't wanna buy them, you wanna raise them yourself. That's even more work you gotta do. So now instead of scrubbing just snake tubs, now you're scrubbing rat tubs as well. My argument starting out in this scenario is the time, the efficiency, fewer animals the fewer mouths to feed the leaner the operation the more time you're going to have for building your brand seeking out great investments that maybe you add one or two tubs more and suddenly you you have a second project going or you have more options in this project versus already having seven tubs full with the other holdbacks Admittedly, the flip side is that you would have 15 pods, so they are worth financially more than 12. That's worth 25% more. And plus, you got the 15 hats. You can make a little cash on the 15 hats. I think that cash difference is negligent, negligent, negligible, not negligent, negligible, negligent, negligible over the 24 months. Here's why. You can make good investments over that time. You can uh, improve your efficiencies over that time. You can invest that money in the stock market over that time. You can buy property over that time. You can find all these different things to do with that money over that time that will give you an opportunity to buy assets and free up your time, your workflow, and your overhead. Not to mention your space. You might just not physically have space. It's over 100% more, again, Three animals to four to, to seven animals, difference of four. Whoop de do, no big deal. As you scale up, as we do, if you're watching this video, I bet you either have over 20 snakes, or in six months to a year, you will have over 20 snakes. It's a, it's a friendly wager. Make the wager with yourself with ourselves. When you're talking about doubling those numbers your efficiency is going to be much, much more valuable because you never know also what's out there. You're going with normal heads. You might find that, especially in this down market right now, ooh, there's buying opportunities out there. You might find that you love pastel pies. Maybe you can find a pastel visual that you would have had to do another year of breeding to work pastel into those heads or into those offspring. At the base level, entry level, Skip the time, skip the line, skip the overhead, skip the hard work. Spend that hard work building your brand and marketing so that when you are ready for sales, when you're ready to sell inventory, you're ready to do sales rather than just starting marketing. It's also a good time to learn. There's nothing wrong with learning on one clutch versus feeling like you're gonna learn on five clutches. You wanna know what you're doing by the time you have five clutches. Let me tell you firsthand, I can promise you that. When would my strategy change? When would my strategy change? Change. My strategy would change under a couple different scenarios. My strategy would change if I couldn't sell the offspring to provide what I was trying to get to. My strategy would change if, I, I'll give you one example. I have a beautiful orange dream male that I love. I could sell his babies and go buy an orange dream pie. I love working with that dude. I wanna see what his genes and selective breeding can do. That's a hobby project. That's not necessarily a business project. You see the difference there? 
that's a personal choice. Um, he's, a, he's a family pet. I want to see what, what his legacy is going to be. As you improve, as you make stronger investments over time, you're going to get to where you are one of the few people controlling that little segment of the market. Let's say, for example, this year I could produce acid pinstripe het ultramels. I'm not saying I'm the first to ever produce them, but I am saying they are basically not available out there. It might be good for me to continue working on that project so that I could produce acid pinstripe ultramels like next season. That would make a difference. Once you're once you're a major player in your niche 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 in the marketplace, then that's when I would say your strategy is going to change. Until then, Try and be building up to the best animal that you can purchase with the money you have. Don't go into debt. Don't go crazy. There's always another snake out there and there's always a market for what you're producing. Just remember, whatever level you're at, there's a whole there's a whole industry at your level as well. I have trouble remembering that, but I do have to remember that. The other scenario that I would keep it is, a, is a, of course, if I thought that I had a new gene or if I thought that I had just a truly outstanding version, market changing or at least product differentiating from the market quality animal, then maybe I'm not going to go with that. Maybe I'll try and work out my own line. We've seen Ozzy do it. We've seen, uh, you know, uh, Josh Jensen do it with the acid. Um, there's ways there, there are opportunities out there for that to happen. I see that kind of like the lottery. I don't know that I can plan on that scenario. I know these scenarios are rife with opportunities to pick apart. Let me know your thoughts. Let's engage the conversation. Let's keep things going. In the meantime, keep it right here on the Proper Royals channel. Check out these videos to keep up with everything that we have going on. You'll see the holdbacks and the animals that are available in all those videos. I'll tell you all about it. I cannot wait until I get to see you in the next video. Until then, see ya.